Live Freedom Friday. Who's this? Hey, Tim. Good to, good to hear from you, brother. Hey, how you doing, man? Who's this? It's Matt from uh, Austin. I've never talked to you before. Oh, Matt, man. Thank you for calling in, man. I'm glad to have you on the line, Matt. What's on your mind You know tonight? what? I'm so glad that you're willing to talk to your constituents and to your people and to the people who, uh, who like you. Um... I've been really, especially with like this whole Jeff Sessions thing coming out, and you had another caller on your show earlier who was talking about this Jeff Sessions uh, coming out and expanding minimum mandatories for the war on drugs. And we all know what the war on drugs is. That's, that is a campaign against people of color and minorities. We all know it. Now, I'm a white, straight, cisgendered male in America. So I'm literally the most privileged person on the planet. Um, and I wanted to ask you because I can't really ask my friends because, like, I know black people, <laughs> but I, I, you know, they're not necessarily politically engaged and politically active. They're not public figures, so I don't want to ask them what to do. But like, when I when I when I read, um, you know, I've been reading about revolutions and reading about political activism to try and get involved because we see the systemic, uh, uh. Uh, systems of racist oppression uh, becoming forefront in our current administration. And um, it's important that as many people as possible get involved in the movement, but being th- being that, it seems like really the revolutions, like, and, and you know, you had a lot of callers talk about Standing Rock. I went to Standing Rock. I, I think I understand Standing Rock because I was there. Like, this movement started from children and from women and from people of color and from oppressed minorities. And um, I think, really, if we're going to have a real revolution in this country, it's going to come from those same groups because they've been struggling against oppression for forever. And for somebody like me, who is in the majority of the American country, um, it's important to be a part of those movements, but I've found like a lot of people in my same situation trying to become leaders of that movement, and that doesn't make any sense to me. Um, and so when Jeff Sessions says he wants to expand the war on drugs, and we all know that's some racist code language bullshit, like how do how do people like me become more active in the community and more active in the movement um, without you know white knighting for the movement and without making it about ourselves and like without getting too involved in the center of it because it's not our movement like how do we become Mm -hmm. better actors in that social change that we want to see or in the change for justice that we want to see because i don't think it's going to be people like me that are going to lead these movements it's going to be the women it's going to be the children it's going to be the people of color that are champions of this movement and i want to know like from your perspective how we support that Man, I love the question, Matt. I appreciate that question. It's amazing. I will answer it. He said, how can white guys like Matt support the revolution for, like, equality and, and some of the issues that are, you know, that for the most part have been led by women of color, um, um, young people, younger people, or, or just, you know, black issues, indigenous issues, uh, these types of things. He wants to know, like, what can he do? How can he help out? How can we be a part of it? And he, he's he's self-aware enough to know that these movements are going to be run by these people who are more closely associated with them, more directly impacted by whatever the grievance is, right? So that's a natural thing. Like, if you're a person that lives um, in, if you live in California and there's a problem in West Virginia, Right, who are, and, and the problems in West Virginia? Who more? Who is more likely to stick with that problem longer? The people living in West Virginia, or you in California? Now, of course, you want to help. You may want to assist. So it's the same type of mentality. We know that the people in West Virginia are going to be more intimately affected by. It. Meanwhile, it's going to stay on their radar when other stuff happens. So it's not, it's, it's, this is not just a racial issue. This is more of proximity to the problem. When you throw a rock over a fence, the dog that bites is the dog get hit. That dog's going to keep barking. So what can Matt do? And people like Matt, I'll tell you what you can do when you recognize the socioeconomic situation, which is America. Give money. Now, I don't just say just throw money out the window at different organizations. I say vet those organizations and give money to those organizations that you know that you have that you have faith in that the money goes where it needs to go to help these issues. 
I'm gonna tell you straight up, man. African Americans, by and large, and 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 for more information on this, I suggest you join Breaking Brown. I realize I can't do everything. I can't be that voice and be Tim Black and do this and do that. I can't do it all. So there are other people that are doing things uh, within the area of you know race, culture, uh, fighting back, uh, trying to trying to find political capital for uh, Black folks, descendants of slaves uh, in this in this country and provide solutions and a way forward and dialogue and helping educate people because education is huge, right? So like, I can't do it all and I don't want to compete with them all. There's no reason to. Breaking Brown might help you with that as well as the Funky Academic and there's a couple other people like Antonio Moore. Like these people are all in this group. If you can give to those, give to those people, if you can provide assistance, research ability, if you can provide uh, legal counsel, like there's ways, if you can provide technology, like whatever whatever you do, whatever that thing is that, you, that is your expertise, you can offer that. It does not have to be money. There's so many ways to be involved. And Matt, I respect the fuck out of you for asking. All right? The fact that you asked and you didn't get, you didn't take it personal. It's like I said before, if there's a problem in 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 Maryland, and it's going on in Maryland right now, and you live in Buffalo, but the problem is in Maryland, who are the people that are going to be most, most likely to stick with that problem? The people in Maryland, because they're right there with it. They got to wake up to it. They don't get to turn on the channel and it goes away. They're right there. So let's not make it about race. Let's make it about proximity to the fucking pain. And if we make it about that, we can take our personal feelings out of it and don't get butthurt and just say, you know what? Hey, how else can I, how can I help? And it's a beautiful thing, Matt, that you're a big enough man to say that and to honestly ask that. But remember, it's not just money. It's also resources. It's connections. It's Zach Haller helping me by talking to Ro Connor and saying, Ro, you need to go on Tim's show. And Ro going on Tim's show, which will be Wednesday, which will be the day after Jamal Thomas comes on my show, which is the day after H.A. Goodman comes on the show. So it's a lot going on next week. <laughs> but yeah, you get my point? Zach did that because he provided a resource, which, which was his voice. It's amazing what we do when we work together. And there's all types of ways to work together. All right? I love you guys so much, man. I appreciate you. More than that, I respect you. How about that? I respect you. And um, let's just keep the party going.